Hello, and welcome to Rogue Artisans and Crafters. Our show is about featuring local artists and craftspeople from within Southern Oregon. We will talk to our featured artists about how they came to their art, what drives them as artists, find out stories behind their art, their art process, and how their work as artists influences their lives. Today we have the privilege of featuring local artist, Anne DeSalvo, who does portraits, figures, and landscapes in pastels, charcoal, and pencil. When I found Anne's art online, I was struck by the quality of her pastel portraits. I found her portrait work very appealing, and I'm pleased to be able to introduce her work to our audience. So Anne, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> so, uh, to begin with, how long have you been a professional artist? Professional? Um, I would say right after I got out of college, yeah. I, I moved down to Kentucky. I was in um, Stevens Point, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. University of Wisconsin, got a bachelor's in art there. And then I moved down to Kentucky and I started getting illustration work, mostly in black and white, right. for publication, various uh, I think mostly it was in the like um, natural area, wildlife, um, nature conservancy kind of work. Yeah, and uh, and at what point uh, did you make the move to Oregon uh, uh, that that brought you here? Um, I moved here in 90, 1992. Yeah, and. I, I got a, a very odd job. I was working with um, High Country Arts. I, was, I started as their shipping person, and then I started in carving antler. Oh, okay. <laughs> Miniature <laughs> animals in antler. Okay, and uh, uh, has your, in making the move to Oregon, uh, has that move in your living here influenced the art that you're doing now? Um, well, it must. Yeah. I, I, I've spent a lot of time outdoors, and um, I looked around. It's, well, it's, it's a really different place than both other places I've lived. Yeah. It's, you know, this kind of mountains are, even Kentucky would has mountains, but they're, they're really different. These go up, those <laughs> yeah. go down. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm, it's, it's been... Uh, a real eye-opening kind of place for yeah. me in so many ways. It's very diverse in its natural features. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, and uh, in looking over your website, I see that you're you're doing both. You're well, you're doing portraits, figures, and landscapes. So that's kind of like the general what I saw on your on your website. Mm -hmm. um, is your is are those categories? Are they kind of like all equally? split in your focus or does one kind of predominate over the others? Well, I, I do another kind of work as well that, that's on the website. It's, it's um, black and white work. Um, it's sort of, it's, I'm not sure how to categorize it, but it's called Fables of the Surface. Okay. So I, I do split between all of those. I do a lot more figurative work because I have the opportunities to more often do long-term poses. Okay. Like um, three to twelve-hour poses. Okay. Which makes it—it's what it takes to get the detail yeah. that I want. And are those like private commission kinds of uh, assignments that that? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, I'm open to that. Yeah. Um, mostly it's models, working from models. Right. And there's a, I have a lot of artist friends and we share models. Okay. And that's, it's, it's also a nice uh, kind of social situation to, to visit. You know, it's a, it's a pretty lonely thing to work in your own studio yeah. by yourself. So when you can get together and work in the same room, it's a lot of fun. So you're, so in that circumstance, you're, you're actually like uh, multiple artists together mm -hmm. is what you're doing and yeah well, there's one model and we you know it's expensive yeah to hire models so we share the cost and we all get you know sometimes somebody's painting i'm using pastel mainly right. and uh as a curiosity what's the what's the cost of having a model come in for a several hour uh it's by session? the hour yeah it's usually around 15 an hour okay. for a model yeah and that's the fee that each artist is paying. Uh, no, we we just all split the. Oh, okay. Um, the total. 
and uh, are and you've got are there many models that that you that the they're like doing this in the art community. Um, there are many models, but they do come and go. Yeah, I lead a figure drawing session at the Ashland Art Center okay. every Monday morning from ten to twelve thirty, and I'm the r model wrangler. Yeah. And I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine you have the same problems I have trying to wrangle guests for my show. So <laughs> well, they have, they lead complicated lives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, on when you do like a, a a figure or a portrait kind of a of a piece, uh, what's like the the time involved in in doing uh, like the like the portrait of Beth that we have here uh, on our, uh, on the show? Uh, I think that was a, a 12 hour pose. Okay. So yeah. it was every Wednesday morning for a month, I think. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so you're you're making a good investment in time to achieve the the the, the look that you're that you're going after as an artist. It, that's what it takes for me. I mean, yeah. to get the detail, it's. Um, I, since the figure drawing session that I run every Monday morning, it's not a long pose. Right. It's, um, there's one minute, two minutes, five minutes, and the longest poses are 25. There, you can really only get sketches. Right. And if you want to do a painting, and some people consider pastels paintings, yeah. um, you really need the time to get the underpainting and the, the final details in and the, the the nuance of the sh shade. Right. So it's a very layered kind of a of a process to, mm -hmm. to achieve the final look. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of picky detail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished. Well, actually, I have one more session. I think it'll be a 12-hour piece, and I I can spend 20 minutes just on his forehead. Yeah. <laughs> now uh, uh, we have like a, one of your landscape pieces uh, here behind us. Um, uh, the landscape pieces are, are all the landscape pieces that you do just strictly to like the local area or do you travel out uh, to some places for your landscape work? Uh, the last places I traveled out to were along the coast right. last July. Yeah, I did a couple pieces there. Um, but it's it's pretty nice in Rogue Valley too. Yeah. I mean this is Take, I, I sat uh, out in front of Weisinger's vineyard. Yeah. And I, usually it's, it's kind of tough doing plein air because the light changes. Mm -hmm. The longer you're there, the right. more different it's going to be. So I, I went back a second day, and I don't, I don't usually do that. But in this case, I'm glad I did. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see if we can uh, go to like a, the next piece that we have here. <laughs> that... <clears throat> was in the um, uh, Jedediah Smith Redwoods. Okay. And I like this story because um, I'd, I'd never been to this, the Giants area, uh -huh. whatever they call that place. And um, I was with a, a few of my artist friends, and we were hiking through and trying to find the right spot to set up. And I just said, well, that one looks pretty nice. That's a pretty big tree. And I set up my easel and... and um, people coming down the trail would always go to this tree that yeah. I was drawing and like <laughs> and they would go and hug it uh -huh. and they would have their picture taken and and not very long after that I realized it was the biggest tree <laughs> it didn't look that yeah. much bigger than the rest of them well there are uh, uh, serious tree lovers know uh, where all the big trees are that's yeah so, it has yeah. a name and everything yeah <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is so let's uh, go on to the next image that we have, and this is uh, this is a portrait. The name is Beth. Her name is Beth. Yeah, yeah. This is the first when I uh, when I came across uh, your work online. This was the portrait that really grabbed my attention. I thought, wow, that's a really wonderful yeah. uh, style of portrait. Well, she's the star of the portraits. I, I'm doing a, a series of I think I'm up to seven or is it eight now. I'm going to have a show at the Manor in oh, May. Okay. And I wanted to do a series of portraits to show there yeah and she was one of the first ones and Beth is actually Beth Boulay is actually a really good actor and I've seen her in a couple of plays here locally okay and she knows how to hold an emotion yeah. in her face so I was so lucky 
to get her. Yeah, as a well, model. that would that would help things uh, as a model if you're a mm -hmm. good actor or actress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the thing that strikes me about this portrait is it it's reminiscent to me of a very classic uh, 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 style of portraiture. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I think back to. Uh, uh, you know, work by Da Vinci and, and the classic styles uh, of the uh, Renaissance era kinds of portraits, and it just it just gives me that feel, hmm. uh, and that's what just really grabbed me when I first found you online. So, well, I'm definitely influenced by the classics. Yeah, um, and just the cleaner, the better. Exactly. I, I keep wanting to put backgrounds in, but I'm not going to do any more on this <laughs> one. <laughs> no, it doesn't really, you don't need any. No. No, it's no, just, it's, a, it's a wonderful portrait. Uh, so let's go on to like the next uh, image. And this is a kind of work I was doing um, when I was just getting out of college. And it's more surreal. Uh -huh. So it has the detail of reality. That is a cross section of the human heart, and and then the underground stuff you see is actually collage okay. from a jewelry magazine or uh -huh. something. And it's about um, it's about leaving California. I never lived in California, but a lot of people leave yeah. there and come north to That's Oregon. That's right. Yeah. And it's 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 sort of talks about the gold in California uh -huh. and even in the bears that they're not golden bears they're blue yeah. because they're so sad uh, yeah <laughs> right yeah well it's a wonderful unique uh, s a surreal piece so I like that that was not pastel it was in colored pencil okay similar yeah uh, okay so let's go on to the next image and so this is an example of one of your figure studies right. Right, it's a long-term pose. Um, he was a very new model, and he was a, he's a great artist himself. He went on to school in uh, Eugene, I think. Okay, all right, so let's uh, go on to the next. This yeah. is a, a plein air piece that I did up on Indian Road. Okay. It was, it was a really hot, clear day, and, and this, the whole hillside was just glowing in the sun. All right. Uh, okay, so let's go on to the next. And this is uh, an iris. It's a it's a pretty big piece, actually. It's that's probably life size. And um, there's a woman in the Colstein Valley that has the biggest iris garden I have ever uh, visited, and she invites artists to come on the weekends oh, okay. to, to paint and draw. So I was do going down there one summer a few times. Uh -huh. And that's one of the trips down there. I painted that. Yeah, that's really nice. Uh, let's go on to the next. And this was uh, part of uh, an exhibit in Grants Pass that invited artists to pair up and do portraits of each other. Oh, okay. And so I was paired up with... Um, his name just popped out of my head. Um, you remember? Jeff Gogway. He's okay. a really wonderful uh, tattoo artist. Oh, okay. So I sat in his in his studio and like for most of a day uh -huh. and painted, and he just kind of chatted with his customers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering what the what the action that was going on there. So that makes for an interesting uh, uh, story. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's go on to the next. This is a spotted owl, uh -huh. and it it is a is an owl that lives on the summit in the mountains right along the summit here, right. and other places too. But they, um, I was commissioned um, by. Um, <laughs> well, I was commissioned to do a series of animals that represent the wildlife that is, um, um, it lives, it, it needs those mountains right. to live there. And um, um, right along, there's a, a trail that goes from the Green Springs to um, Pilot Rock. Right, okay. And there's uh, a few signs 
inf information signs for people who um, want to know more about the monument. Uh -huh. And those are on that sign. Okay. All right. And let's uh, go to the next one. And my partner Bruce and I went to Italy in the year 2000. Uh -huh. And we were with uh, friends who were partly from there. And so we got our first tour around in Italy. This is in Portofino. Yeah, okay. On the harbor. And that, and I didn't draw everything in, but I wanted to get uh, the real flavor of the place. Yeah. But um, my friend who's from there said that the woman with the sunglasses just really looks Italian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I did. I did a whole series of pieces there, um, and sold them before I made them. Wow. Okay. So well, that's pretty good. That was a that was a kind of a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> now you do uh, uh, much traveling uh, to do your work, or is it like because uh, you've mentioned like doing the plain air kinds of of experiences. Um, throughout the year, I mean, are you doing that a lot, or is it just kind of like a, a, a sporadic kind of thing? Compared Pretty sporadic. To, yeah. I don't, I don't do a lot of traveling for, for plein air, but sometimes where I'm going, I have the time, and I bring my materials, mm -hmm. and um, a few trips to the coast, down to the Redwoods, and uh, some, some at Crater Lake, and... Um, it, I don't do nearly as much as I would like. Right. Typically, what's the? Because uh, I've never done that myself. Although I've 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 seen shows about that process, and uh, and I've known some other people that do that. So, uh, and it's something that I personally have kind of considered as I try to think about getting back into doing more of my art outside of my photography. So, when someone when you're out there, I mean, what kind of a of an investment in time is it? I mean, are you there for like two or three hours, or is it an all day thing, or you know? You're, if you want an all, you want a whole day. Yeah. Even though you can't use the whole day, it depends on how far you're going. Right. But you want to be able to take rests and, um, and get out of the sun if you're if it ends up the sun starts beating down on you uh -huh. in the summer. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, okay and. Uh, now, uh, do in your work, are you doing, uh, or is most of the work that you're doing like just kind of like uh, independent, uh, you, you, you just make a piece and just kind of put it out there, or are you doing a lot of commission work as well? Uh, mostly it's not commission, but um, every now and then I'll have somebody pick me out. Um, uh, but. There was a, a lo very long commission. It took me a year and a half to complete. Oh, okay. Um, a couple in Missouri came to Ashland and they found me and decided that I would be the person to do this project they had in mind. Uh -huh. And um, I hired models and um, and it was it was a lot of invention because it was um, two saints, Saint Mary, Saint oh, Joseph. Okay. And so I had to do research. It took right. it took a long time, and it was there was a lot of like one of them. It, it has lots of background, right. and a lot of information goes into that. There was one that was it had an angel in it, and so I had to like how do you how do you draw an angel? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Didn't want to do it like everybody else's yeah. angel. Yeah. Now here's an, another piece that that's uh, that we have. Uh, what's going on with this one? This is, it started off as um, a, a figure drawing from uh -huh. a session, and I decided I was going to make a whole series of uh, women and flowers. Oh, okay. And so um, this one's called um, um, Rose Diva. Okay. Yeah, I, I really like the uh, that a lot. I like the... Uh, the the coloration in it the, the it's just a, a really wonderful piece thank you and uh, now in when someone uh, comes to you to to uh, to acquire a piece of your work uh, are these like the, what the we've got here on display is this like the typical size of your work that, that you're doing and uh, or do you do like larger 
uh, pieces as well? We have a small studio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to work larger, but um, this that's probably about the size it is. Maybe yeah. it's a little bit larger. Yeah. Um, I have a lot. We have a lot of stuff on our walls. Right. And um, and a lot and a big rack full, and I can pull things out. The things are leaning against the wall. I can. Yeah, they're. They're as, as accessible as I can make them. Right. And what's the general price range of on your work for someone to want to uh, acquire a piece uh, for their home? Anywhere from 250 to 1200 Okay. Somewhere in that range. Yeah. Mostly in the middle of that range. Right. And uh, where's your... Uh, your uh, where's your art currently can be seen? Is it... Do you have any Pretty galleries much, right now? Um, Pretty much in our studio yeah. on the corner of Fifth and A Streets in Ashland. Right. I have a piece uh, in the Rogue Gallery right now. They have a members show up. Um, I've been in the Rogue Valley Biennial, you know, kind of group show things. I've been in there three times, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, and last time I was at your studio, you talked about uh, uh, your involvement with the uh, with the Ashland Art. Uh, association. Oh, the catalog. gallery association. Yeah, the the, uh, the annual uh, guide that, that right, you produce. Right. I'm editing that as we speak, except not right now. <laughs> 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 no, it's it's um, an annual guide. I'm the editor. Um, I'm also on the board. I'm board secretary of the gallery association. I've been involved with that for oh about I don't know 15, 16 years. Yeah. More. And. Uh, when you moved uh, to Oregon, did you, did you move directly here to Ashland? Uh, no. Mm -mm. Uh, I first was working with my friends in the antler business, and it was in Trail, up, okay. up 62. Yeah. But I lived there for about a year. Okay. And then moved to Ashland. And, uh, uh, you know, Ashland's got a, a really strong art community. Yeah, there's hundreds of artists here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, as I've been researching uh, for this show, trying to find artists mm -hmm. uh, to feature, I mean, I've been impressed by uh, the, the sheer number of artists just here in Jackson County, and a big chunk of them are right here in Ashland. I mean, I think I've got like around 300 names so far. <laughs> uh, so there's plenty of artists to select among uh, for future uh, uh, visits on the show. So, um, and... Uh, but I'm, I'm glad that you're uh, that you're one of our earliest uh, uh, artists to be featured. Cause, I'm uh, glad too. Thanks, Dave. Uh, okay. So, in uh, uh, I can't remember if there's any more. Okay, there's another piece that's, that's that we have. That's another one of your figure studies. Mm -hmm. That was probably done at the a figure drawing session at the art center. It yeah. was it's a sketch. I mean, it's it's a drawing, but it's a quick piece. Right. It's, I think a 25 minute piece. Now, how many uh, classes do you do at the Ashland Art Center on a monthly basis? I only do the one on Mondays. It's, it's uninstructed. I, okay. just, I just wrangle the models and time it and set up the room. So. Yeah. But I do teach um, uh, tutoring. Uh, it's one-on-one -on -one set private sessions at my studio. Okay. I'm available for that. Okay, and what's the cost for, for some private uh, private lessons? I charge by the hour, 30 yeah. an hour. Okay, well, that's a good reasonable yeah. rate, yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd be a, a good worthwhile thing to do. Mm. Uh, and you stay pretty busy with that? Um, I stay pretty busy, period. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you, well, you're a good artist. You should stay busy if you want to uh, uh, you know, make a good living at it. So, yeah, that's a good sign. Well, I I have I do the editing too, yeah, and uh, work with the gallery association, and and I have a garden, and I have a social life, you know, and then yeah. <laughs> clean the studio once in a while. <laughs> now you've got a website. I do that people can visit. And dissolvo.com. Okay, and do you have any other social media accounts that people can find you on? You have like no. a Facebook or Instagram or anything? No, I'm kind of a. Luddite, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're, if you're staying pretty busy, you probably want to, you know, uh, you know, the, probably the website's more than enough. I do answer my email most of the time. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got to maintain that customer contact. So you know, all time. Yeah. So. Um, I even answer the phone. Well, hey, okay. So you know, that's good. Um, 
so you know it's been really great having you on the show uh, you're a wonderful artist and uh, and I'm happy to be able to give you some exposure and, and let people know about uh, the quality of your work well, I really appreciate it and uh, so uh, that's the end of our show and I thank you for being here Anne uh, so we've reached the end of our show, Rogue Artisans and Crafters, and we thank you at home for joining us and, feature, and learning about our featured artist, Anne DeSalvo. We thank Anne for being our featured artist and appearing on our show to discuss her life and work. We also want to thank our crew who made it possible to put this program together and to thank RVTV for their wonderful studio facility, which allows us to produce shows such as this one. If you'd like to become a studio producer and create your own public access show, you can contact RVTV to learn how. You can watch this show on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. and Thursday evenings at 11.30 p.m. on Channel 15 of the Ashland Home Network and in the rest of Southern Oregon via Charter Cable on Channel 182. You can also find all episodes of Rogue Artisans and Crafters at archive.org. You can also visit RVTV online at rvtv.sou.edu to find live streaming of all RVTV shows. Please make sure and check out Anne DeSalvo's website where you can get more information about her art. I'd like to take this time to also wish tonight's crew and everyone here at RVTV that has helped me this year in 2017 as I produced and hosted not only this series but my other series, Gems of the Road Valley, a wonderful and safe holiday season. To everyone here at RVTV and everyone watching, have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We will see you all in 2018. I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Nino, and we will see you next time. <laughs>